Hello and welcome back to another episode of Will It Moneyball. Uh, I think this could be a fun episode. So here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to sort of see if there was any patterns I could find to best predict who would win the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, there's not too many Super Bowls, so we're dealing with small sample sizes. On top of this, I don't know how much I can, you know, take away a Super Bowl from like the 80s compared to now. It's almost two different sports, but I still wanted to give it a go. I came up with seven different potential factors I could look at that could determine who is the better team for Super Bowl weekend. You know, who has the better chance of winning? Uh, I looked at if they have played before, who was the Vegas favorite prior to the game, who had just the better record, who won more games over the regular season, who had more defensive points per drive, offensive points per drive, and then also there's net points per drive, which is essentially just point differential, but also factoring in the per drive uh, of it all. So that way, you know, a good team that ran more drives doesn't get an advantage there. And then uh, finally, who had just the better quarterback season? So which team had the better, uh, had the quarterback who had a better passer rating? Those were the seven categories. So we'll first start off with this one because as you see, uh, this is, you know, points per drive for offense, defense, and just net points per drive. And uh, the win-loss record is, that's the win-loss record of the team that was better in those categories so as you would expect i mean everything seems you know everything checks out here worth noting this goes back to 1993 because the data doesn't go back any further than that but yeah uh so in the past uh, you know 27 super bowls it's been a slight advantage to the team that's better in every single category which does make sense because you know there were obviously some examples where team uh, led in all three where they led in one or led in two but then if you look at the vegas favorite this is interesting so by and large, there's a significant, you know, win-loss record for the team that was the Vegas favorite. They won 36 games and have lost 18 games, which, okay, so Vegas favorite tends to win. But what's interesting is in the past 19 Super Bowls, the Vegas favorite is only 10 and 9. And that alone could be, okay, well, that's just sort of, you know, that's how numbers work. Sometimes things are a little bit fluky. But I think if you look at the favorites from the past, you know, uh, this century compared to last century, I think what you would notice is that there was a lot more blowouts or ex expected blowouts early on in the NFL's history. Ever since the salary cap was introduced, I think that it's been a lot closer, both in just, you know, expected uh, who's supposed to win the favorites and also if the favorite has won or not. So I actually don't know how much I can take this into consideration. And I, I kind of feel like it's probably closer to I should just throw it out than I should include it, despite the, you know, on the surface level, a large difference. We also have if they played before, and this is a virtual tie. Uh, so, you know, this is something you can use for this game. The Bucks and the Chiefs did play before the Chiefs won. If the Chiefs win uh, Super Bowl 55, it'll be even 500, 7-7 seven and seven for both of them. So, again, this is the kind of thing where it's so close and it's such a small sample size you kind of just have to throw it out. Finally, for the last two categories, things got a bit weird. So first, let's do better record. Since 1998, uh, it got a little bit closer uh, after that point because, again, we're starting to get to the, the Cowboys dynasty and uh, things of that and, you know, the 49ers dynasty, big blowouts. I do feel like it's probably closer to use the past 20 years or so. Teams that had a better record going into the Super Bowl have a losing record in the Super Bowl in the past 20 years or so. And again, I know the numbers don't totally sync up. That's because sometimes there was a tie, so that's not included. Uh, and again, I'm not cherry picking since 1998. I could cherry pick more because in, in the past nine examples where there's been a differential in win-loss record, the team with the worst record has won eight of them. So uh, I don't know what's going on there. Also, in that same time frame, the team that had the better quarterback season ends up losing more games. So, again, this is a small sample size. If just a couple uh, went the other way, then it's a completely different scenario. But it did make me think, is there some explanation for this? Or is it just, you know, that's numbers. Sometimes fluky things happen. So I tried to think for possible explanations for what could this be? Is this just, you know, random uh, and, you know, it just happens? I, I think that, you know, there's some speculation I could have on some of these things like for example the team with a better record losing more you could argue they're maybe not as battle tested they maybe haven't had as difficult of a run if you go 14 and 2 uh, you're used to winning you're used to being able to make mistakes and still come back whereas maybe an 11 and 5 team 
they kind of have, you know, more drive and they sort of have had to, you know, they've had things go wrong. They found out that when they make a mistake, that sometimes costs them a game, whereas the 14 and 2 team doesn't. But in this Super Bowl, it's hard to really say that that would matter too much just simply because, uh, you know, both these teams have been, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers haven't really been here before, but Brady has, all of the Chiefs have. The Chiefs are totally battle tested, even if they're not so much this season. So, I don't really take that into consideration. I, I think it's probably just fluky. And same thing for uh, quarterback. The fact that having a quarterback who had a higher passer rating in the regular season means you're more likely to lose. A bit curious. Doesn't make a ton of sense. I would have thought that maybe there would be some sort of like hot take of the better quarterback tends to win. Doesn't tend to work out that way. Part of me just wonders if that's, you know, again, luck, fluke. But it could be something towards like maybe the quarterback who is the better quarterback. The team kind of relies on him to bail their team out in certain areas. Whereas the team that had the worst quarterback, they're sort of saying, no, we have to win this game. And there could be sort of a mental aspect there. But again, uh, it's such a small sample size. It's hard to really take too much into that. It's interesting. I find it interesting. Maybe there is something there, but it's, you know, uh, it's difficult to feel that way, especially when in the playoffs, it's not that case in the playoffs the better team with the better record tends to win the team with the better quarterback tends to win so i think it's probably just you know uh if you flip a coin 20 times sometimes it lands on head uh 14 times even if it was weighted and it should land on tails more often that's just how numbers work so now in conclusion what did we learn here so these were the seven categories and you notice that tampa bay won four out of the seven but keep in mind uh, a couple of these were wonky. I mean, one of the ones that Tampa Bay won was because their quarterback isn't as good. And another one they won is because they have a worse record. That's actually winning the category just simply because of how the numbers ended up working out, which how much can you really, you know, put stock into that? So looking at this one, out of the ones that Tampa Bay uh, actually, you know, out of the ones that actually made a difference. So we're, you know, taking out uh, the ones where if they played before, because that was a virtual tie and I'm taking out Vegas favorite. You can include it if you want. Uh, it, it, that's sort of personal preference. I, I'm not, but you can. Uh, that would mean Tampa Bay won four to one. But again, uh, these are all the ones that actually mattered. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all the ones that mattered and make sense. Over here, for the ones that matter and make sense, uh, Tampa Bay won two to one. So at this point, we're literally just talking defensive points per drive, offensive points per drive, and net points per drive. The Chiefs had the better offense. Bucks had the better defense and the best, you know, net points per drive as well. Uh, and the one, again, that you could maybe include would be who's the biggest favorite. If you gave that to Kansas City, then it would be two and two. Uh, I'm not sure if you can, but that's something you could do. Uh, so kind of interesting. So what did we learn here? Well, not a ton, honestly. I mean, I was hoping we'd find some number that's like, oh, this gives a 90% chance of who's going to win the Super Bowl every time doesn't really work out that way, uh, which is unfortunate, but you know, that's that's sort of the way it goes. Sometimes uh, you don't necessarily find what you hope to find when you start doing these this, this type of video and start using math to try and figure this stuff out. I think we learned some stuff. I think we learned that like, you know, how well you are in defensive points per drive, offensive points per drive, and net points per drive matters more than, you know, which team has the better quarterback or even which team has the better record uh, statistically. So th I think that's interesting. I also think it's interesting that the biggest favorite can be oftentimes wrong, which makes sense because it is just some, you know, uh, it's really who do people bet on. And also it's interesting to find that, you know, the team that tends that won the first matchup doesn't necessarily win the second matchup. So we found some interesting things, but did we find a perfect way to predict who's going to win the Super Bowl? No, we didn't. So if this video series is called Will It Moneyball? This is the first no, it will not Moneyball. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.